Sa'adun Nabi Waqas said, Three nights before I embraced Islam, I saw a dream. It was like I was drowning in darknesses. And I was trying to get out. I couldn't find my way out. And then the moon came out in front of me. And that moon helped me get out of the darkness that I was. When I woke up, it reached me. That the most truthful and the most honest man in Mecca, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, has come out with a, a message. But I realized Allah wants good for me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَقُولُ قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَالْمُصْطَفَ الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّلُ الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن سيرة أبا بلاب المسنجة صلى الله عليه وسلم and last lesson we were speaking about the people who migrated we mentioned Mus'ab ibn Umair Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum Bilal and today inshallah ta'ala we have two more people who we need to touch on their biography, insha'Allah ta'ala. That is Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas and Ammar ibn Yasir. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, he was from the earliest people who embraced Islam. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, he was from the early people who embraced Islam. He actually said, لَقَدْ مَكَثْتُ سَبْعَةَ أَيَّامٍ وَإِنِّي لَثُلُثُ الْإِسْلَامِ he said, I, for seven days, when was one-third of Islam. And he, the people that embraced Islam before him were a few in number. Five, six people, تقريباً. Seven, maybe. And he was from the early people who embraced Islam, رضي الله تعالى عنه. The messenger was very happy when Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas embraced Islam. He did. He was very happy. And the reason why he was very happy was because Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, he had and it was seen from him, يعني ذكاه, he was a very smart individual. And he was very courageous. He had very masculine traits. Rujula. Shaja'a. He also had Rajahatul Aqal, a very smart man. He wasn't dim witted. Radiallahu ta'ala anu. And also, why the Prophet was so happy with his Islam is because Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas is from the people of the Prophet's mother, Bani Zuhra. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas is min Bani Zuhra. And the Prophet's mother. Amina binti Wahab is from Bani Zuhra. And so he was happy to see someone embrace Islam from his mother's side. And actually the Prophet ﷺ used to um, um, mention this relationship between him and Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. The Prophet would point it out. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, هَذَا خَالِي فَلْيُرِنِ امْرُؤٌ خَالَهُ That's my maternal uncle. One of you show me your maternal uncles, huh? The Prophet used to say, "Ada Khali." That's my maternal uncle, Sa'ad Nabi Waqas. فَلْيُرِنِ مُرُؤٌ خَالَهُ Let one of you show me his maternal uncle. But as I said before in our previous lessons, everybody who embraced Islam, my brothers and sisters, they were tortured, persecuted, and Sa'ad Nabi Waqas was not an exception. Sa'ad was not an exception here. He went through the persecution and the torture just like his brothers from the other companions were tortured and were persecuted. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas is going to tell us his own story. He's going to tell us his own story. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas said, رَأَيْتُ فِي الْمَنَامِ I saw in a dream قَبْلَ أَنْ أُسْلِمَ بِثَلَاثِ لَيَالٍ Three nights before I embraced Islam, I saw a dream. 
كأني غارق في ظلمات. And my dream was as follows. It was like I was drowning in darknesses. So Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas said, I saw in my dream that I was deep drowning in darkness. And I was trying to get out, but I was fumbling. I couldn't find my way out. And then a, a light, a moon came out in front of me. فَاتَّبَعْتُ And that moon helped me get out of the darkness that I was. So he's comparing the darkness to water. And the moon is that light. So he said, I managed to find where I was and how I could get out. So I got out of the darkness. فَرَأَيْتُ نَفَرًا أَمَامِي قَدْ سَبَقَنِي إِلَى ذَلِكَ الْقَمَرِ I saw someone in front of me who had already managed to get to the moon before me. And then when I got there, I found Zayd ibn Haritha and Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And this is my dream. I saw these people there already at the moon. فَقُلْتُ لَهُمْ In my dream I said to them, مُنذُ مَتَى أَنْتُمْ هَا هُنَا How long have you guys been here? فَقَالُوا They said, السَّاعَةَ we just, re- we just got here. ثُمَّ إِنِّي لَمَّا طَلَعَ عَلَيَّ النَّهَارِ He said, when I woke up, and it was daytime, I woke up in the morning, بَلَغَنِي It reached me. I started asking questions. My dream felt, يعني, some of the narrations mentioned, Sa'ad Abu Qas said, it was a dream that I couldn't even forget. Normally you forget your dream. He said, this was stuck with me. So vivid, so clear. And he said, I knew this was something more than just a dream. And so he said, I asked him around in Mecca about anything, anything out of the ordinary. And they told me that the most truthful and the most honest man in Mecca, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, has come out with a, and a message. And he calls himself the messenger sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, without any hesitation, I knew that was what well. I knew that was what my dream was. And I was informed that he was hiding. This was the time that the Prophet ﷺ, his da'wah was da'wah sirriya. He was hiding his message. And he said, not only did I realize that was what I was being told about, but I realized, فَعَلِمْتُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَرَادَ بِخَيْرًا I realized Allah wants good for me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulama al-Islam mentioned that the dream يَسُرُّ وَلَا يَغُرُّ the ru'ya, the dream, is good news, but it doesn't deceive you. If you see yourself in a dream, in Jannah, with the Prophet, yasurru wa la yagurru, meaning it gives you glad tidings, good news, inshallah ta'ala, it's going to make you work harder. But it won't deceive you in the sense where you become laxidaisical and say, you know what, that dream is an evidence that I am in Ahlul Jannah. That dream is an evidence that I am forgiven. And also, ulama mentioned there's dawabid and principles for when it comes to dreams. For example, from the dreams that a person might have is seeing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet said, Man ra'ani fin manami. Anyone who sees me in a dream, faqad ra'ani, he has seen me. Fa'inna shaytan la yatamathalu bi. The Prophet said, the shaytan cannot impersonate me. But that's if you saw the Prophet. With his descriptions. If what you saw in your dream meets the, con- the, the description of the Prophet wasallam, then shaitan cannot, uh, cannot take the Prophet's place. But remember this. From the qualities and the characteristics of the Prophet is that he will not tell you something that goes against the Sharia. In the dream... He won't tell you, you don't have to pray five times a day. And then some people, they think when they wake up, they say, the Prophet told me I don't need to pray. And this does not meet the criteria and the description of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. 
Because when he was dying, what did he say? The prayer, the prayer. So, the last day he got up out of, out of his bed and he walked. He moved the curtain as his house was connected to the masjid. He moved the curtain, he got his head out and guess what he saw? He saw his sahabas all lined up led by Abu Bakr in the congregational prayer. فَتَبَسَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And he smiled. So, that was the joy that the Prophet saw. You know why he smiled? Because number one, he conveyed the message he was given. يَا أَيُّهَا الرَّسُولُ بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ O Messenger of Allah, convey that which was made obligatory on you to convey. So he conveyed his message. So he was happy that he conveyed the message that was given to him. It was a very heavy responsibility. And also what made him very, and his smile was that he saw people of different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different stories, all facing their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That unity, that the Muslims were together. Not just united, but united on that. The greatest action by the tawheed, which was the salah. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا What first was mentioned. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Hold on to the rope of Allah. Hold on to the rope of Allah. Then Allah told us, do not divide. Yani, there has to be something that brings us all together. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَمُوسَى وَعِسَى أَنْ أَقِيمُوا الدِّينَ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ أَنْ أَقِيمُوا الدِّينَ Establish the religion. وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ And they'll become disunited. So he was happy that he had seen those 23 years of hardship, of يعني, losing a large number of his companions, losing his children. The only child that is remaining for him now is his daughter Fatima. He lost everything. But he's now seen the fruits of his hard work. Al-Allama Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah He said that smile That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Showed that day Are you going to be the one that rubs it off his face By not coming with what he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made him smile Honey Would you not want to make the Prophet smile If he came to you now Would you not want to put a smile on the Prophet's face Huh The thing that put a smile on his face was the fact that he saw this. You know what, many years back, I read, read a hadith. And Imam Muhammad narrated this in his hadith. The Prophet said, Ahabu nasi ilayya. The most beloved person to me. And the one who loves me the most. Is man ahabba an yarani, that is the one who wants to see me, Nabilai Muhammad. But on the expense that he loses his children and his wife and his kids and everything that he has. Just to see me. Not to accompany me. Not to spend days with me. Just to see me. You lose everything. Your wife, your children, your wealth, everything. But you'll see him. Khalas. One minute you see him and then you move on. And you lose everything. That hadith stuck with me. Because at the beginning, when I first saw the hadith, I'll be like, who wouldn't want to see the Prophet? But the question is, if you would sacrifice all of that just to see the Prophet, do you put him before all of those things? And if the answer is no, then maybe that wouldn't be the case. You wouldn't be the one who wants to see him in, in losing everything that you have. If everything else is what you put before Allah and his messenger. صح? So Abi so the point I was trying to say was that the dream, my brothers and sisters, that a person sees is an encouragement. It brings you good news. That it's not something to deceive you. Sa'adun Abi Waqas, look what he said. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, I started to look around for Nabilah Muhammad and his companions. Where is it that they... Stay. He said, as I was walking around in Mecca, trying to find the location, the place, he said, I came to 
الشعب افالي كولج جياد and it's still until today it's called شعب جياد that road شارع جياد in مكة it's that area he saw Nabi Allah Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام there he was praying صلى الله عليه وسلم and it was Asr time and the Prophet was praying so what he did is he said I went over to him and I gave him salams and he said subhanallah this was my dream unfolding in front of me because I was walking towards the light that I wanted and that was who? the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam wa kathalika uhayna ilayka ruham min amrina ma'a kunta tadrima al-kitab wa lal-eeman wa lakin ja'alnahu nooran nahdi bihi man nashaw min ibadina wa innaka latahdi ila sirat mustaqim the Prophet was a light, a nur alayhi salatu wasalam look at then Sa'ad ibn Abu Qas he carries on his story he said, وَمَا إِنْ سَمِعْتُ أُمِّي بِخَ... وَمَا إِنْ سَمِعَتْ أُمِّي بِخَبَرِ إِسْلَامِ His mother heard about his Islam. She heard that Sa'ad Nabi Waqas had embraced Islam. حَتَّى ثَارَتْ ثَائِرَتَهَا Then what she did is she threw a tantrum. تقيف. And Sa'ad, one of the qualities that he had was that he was very obedient towards his mother. Very. She knew that. Very gentle and soft to his mom. He said, وَكُنْتُ فَتًا بَرًّا بِهَا I was a very obedient son to my mother. مُحِبًّا لَهَا I loved her so much. فَأَقْبَلَتْ عَلَيَّ تَقُولُ She came walking to me and she said to me, يَا سَعَدُ سَعَدْ مَا هَذَا الدِّينُ الَّذِي اِعْتَنَقْتَهُ What is this religion that I hear that you've embraced? And this religion has now become a means, she said, that you do not hold on to the religion of your forefathers. فَصَرَفَكَ عَنْ دِينِ أُمِّكَ وَأَبِيكَ And he has turned you away from the religion of your mother and your father, Sa'ad. She then said to him, وَاللَّهِ لَا تَدَعَنَّا وَاللَّهِ you will leave this religion, this new religion that you have embraced. أَوْ لَا أَكُلُ وَلَا أَشْرَبُ حَتَّى أَمُوتْ And I will not eat or drink until you leave that religion. And I will not eat and drink until I die or you leave this religion. You pick Sa'ad. And she knew that that was his soft spot. She said, Sa'ad, Wallah, you're going to leave this religion or I'm not going to eat and drink until I die. And she said, listen to this. And the people are going to shame you for the rest of the time. That your mother died because of thirst and hunger. He then looked at his mother and he said, Mom, لا تفعلي يا أمه. My mother, don't do this. Don't do this to yourself. Don't leave of food and drinking. فأنا لا أدع ديني لأي شيء. Mom, I'm not going to leave my religion. This deen that I have embraced today, I'm not going to leave it for anyone or anything. She said, okay, we'll see. For the first time she has seen Sa'ad Nabu Qas يعني, not listening to her request. So what did she do? She stayed away from drinking and eating. And she did that for days. She was not eating and she was not drinking. And he could see that his mother had lost weight. فَهَزُلَ جِسْمُهَا She lost يعني, meat. She became very يعني, weak and fragile. وَوَهَنَ عَظْمُهَا Her bones became weak. You can see his mother was very tired and fatigued and she was holding her head. And every now and then she would come to him and she would say to him, listen, the way I am, you are the cause for it. Take me out of this pain and go and leave this religion. And he would say, no, my mom. I'm going to hold on to this deen. And then after a while he would go to her and bring, him, bring her water and food and she would refuse. Then he realized that he has to tell his mom as it is. So he came to his mom and he said to his mother, Ya ummah, inni ala, alay, in, ya ummah, inni ala shadidi hubbi laka. My mother, my excessive love for you. 
is, Daddy, my love is excessive. I really love you. But the love I have for the Prophet and Allah is greater than yours, Mom. حُبِّي لَكَ أَشَدُّ حُبَّا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ My love for you is not more than the love I have for Allah and His Messenger. وَوَاللَّهِ by Allah. لَوْ كَانَ لَكِ أَلْفُ نَفْسٍ My mother, if you had a, a thousand nafs, فَخَرَجَتْ مِنْكَ نَفْسًا بَعْدَ نَفْسٍ And every time you were losing one nafs, I could see you dying. And the numbers were going less and less and less and less. مَا تَرَكْتُ دِينِ هَذَا لِشَيْءٍ I'm not going to leave this religion for anything or anyone. So when she saw that he was serious and he was not going to leave it or budge, she went and started eating and drinking. She said, listen, this guy is not going to listen. And she went back to her eating and her drinking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the ayah, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا The ayah in Surah Al-Luqman came down. What does it mean? وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ And this is from the ayat that Ibn Munasif Al-Qurtubi in his Kitab Al-Injad for Abwaab Al-Jihad he mentions that the word jihad here has been used in the context of what? Other than fighting وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ Meaning, if she exerts her efforts, the asl, the original meaning of the word jihad is what? Badlul juhdi. Sah? It's to exert efforts. If she exerts her efforts, your parents, your mom, your dad, whichever of them, they exert their efforts. Ala ad so that you can, they, they force the child to do shirk. And they tell the child to leave Islam. Ala ad مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Don't obey them. They tell you leave this deen. You're, you can no longer be a Muslim. I will boycott you. I will never talk to you. You're a disobedient son. فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا But be friends with them in this world. وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Be good friends with them in this dunya. And in sahaba, they ask you for something, ties of kinship, care, yani all of that, let that be in place. But, don't listen to this. al mutlaqa, the unrestricted obedience is for who? Allah and his messenger. Allah and his what? Messenger. He then said in Abu Waqas, what's very amazing is that he, an ayah came down on him. This ayah came down on who? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. And that verse will be recited until the, until the day of judgment. That shows yani, how great he was as a person. For Allah to address his situation. For Allah wa ta'ala, to address his situation, it shows of what value and what greatness that Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas occupies. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, on the day of Badr, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas and his brother, whose name was Umair, that day in the battle of Badr, and by the way, that battle, as we're going to see, inshallah ta'ala, in the seerah, it's a day where it really separated things. Liyameez Allahu al-Khabitha min al-Tayyib. It was to separate good from falsehood. It was the first clash in this ummah, the first clash of civilization, truth on one side and falsehood on the other side. Are we all together, brothers? And as we're going to look at it in great details, inshallah ta'ala, in the seerah, it was a test of courage and faith. Yani, you did not come out prepared. You were not ready. Preparation for preparation, psychology they say, psychologists they say, preparation plays 80% of performance. That preparation can be mental preparation. This is going to happen. I need to encounter this. Huh? There was none of that. The Sahabas did not leave for a fight. That was not what they were going out for. It was something else that they went out for. 
they end up coming somewhere away from their houses in the middle of the desert and they're now told the intention needs to change we're going to now go and fight and even Allah told us subhanahu wa ta'ala كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِّنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَكَارِهُونَ Some of the believers did not like this. Yeah, and it was hard on them. Ya Rasulullah, we're not ready. Ya Rasulullah, I left my my wife. Look how I'm dressed. Ya Rasulullah, I left my sword behind. Ya Rasulullah, I didn't even have my riding beast. I'm, I'm not ready for this. Huh? They were very, very nervous that day. But subhanallah, this is what makes this is what makes the believer a hasib al nas. And you turaku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Wala kadifatan al ladina min kabalihim falayalaman allahu al ladina sadaku wala yalaman al kadibin. It was really a test of their iman. It was a what? It was a test of their iman. And so the sahabas, look what they said. They said, Ya Rasulullah, is this what Allah has willed for us? The Prophet said, yes. He said, let it be then. We will not say to you, they said, Wallahi Ya Rasulullah, la naqulu laka kama qalat Banu Israila li Musa. We're not going to say what Banu Israila said to Nabi Allah Musa. اذهب أنت وربك فقاتل إنها هنا قاعدون. You and your Lord go and fight. We're just going to sit here and wait for you guys to bring the results. We're not going to say that to you. What we're going to say to you is, you and your Lord fight, and we are going to fight with you. And big words they used. The point is, my brothers and sisters, the people who participated in Badr, they stick out from the rest of the companions. That was a day. يعني بدر شهد بدرا when you read that in the seerah of a sahabi you know something else أهل بدر do you know what the prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم about the people of بدر there was a companion by the name of حاطب ابن أبي بلتعا حاطب wrote a letter and he sent that letter to Quraysh basically telling them about the prophet's strategy the, 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 the prophet's plan and he wrote a letter the Prophet, a revelation came down on him. He was informed that a companion had sent a letter to Quraysh and basically is uh, informing them about the plan of the Prophet. In this modern day, we call that what? Treason. Capital punishment. The Prophet sent Zubair ibn Awwam. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Miqdad, he said, all of you three go, get to a place called Wadi Khakh. There's a valley there. Get that letter before it reaches the hand of Quraysh. Catch it. They went, they caught the letter. They, there was a woman there. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, listen, do you have anything on you that you need to be giving to us? She said, no, I don't have anything. Zubair asked her, Miqdad asked her. All three of them, when they asked heavily, strongly, Zubair and Miqdad said, listen, Ali, it doesn't seem like she has anything. We need to go back. Ali said, no, no, no. no. If the Prophet said that she has something, wallahi, she has it, and she's going to give it to me. So Ali went and he addressed her. He said, listen, I know you have it. And you know you have it. You're going to give it to me. I'm going to rip your clothes and I'm going to get it out of you. doesn't matter. If it takes me that far, I'll go. So she said, okay, move away from me. She stood away a bit. She opened her hair and she had plaited the note into her hair. She gave the letter to them. Ali Nabi Talib and Miqdad and Zubair brought the letter to the Prophet. The letter says, Min Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a. Says his name. The Prophet sitting there, the Sahabas are sitting there. Umar stands up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, da'ani. Ya Rasulullah, give me the permission, wallahi. Adrib unuqa hadha al-munafiq. I'll take this hypocrite out. Now, what I want you to listen to is the, the response that the Prophet said. 
the Prophet said, إِنَّهُ قَدْ شَهِدَ بَدْرًا And I underline this point. Hatib participate in the battle of Badr. I mean, that's the level he's at. What did he just do? Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Innahu qad shahida badara. Another riwayah says, the Prophet said to Umar ibn Khattab, he said to him, khallu sabilahu. Leave him alone. Innahu qad shahida badaran. Is that all that the Prophet said? No. The Prophet went on and saying, he said, Inna Allah ala ahli Badr. Allah looked at the hearts of the people of Badr and he said to them, I'malu ma shi'tum. Do as you all wish. Fa inna Allah qad ghafara lakum. Allah has forgiven you all. Ani. Participating in Badr is a daraja, a level Ani, that you gain up, my brothers. Do as you wish. Are we all together, brothers? Do as you wish. Allah has forgiven you all. Does that make sense, brothers? So, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas participated in that, in that battle. Him and his brother, Umair. And that day, they didn't just participate. They played a big, significant role that day. He was very young, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. They say that he was only 17. 17 years of age. He fought heavily that day. And um, the narration mentions, he says, فَلَمَّا أَخَذَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَعْرِضُ جُنْدَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ قَبْلَ الْمَعْرِكَةِ مَعْرَكَةِ تَوَارَى عُمَيْرٌ أَخُوْ سَعَدٍ خَوْفًا مِنْ أَنْ يَرَاهُ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ Sa'ad Nabi Waqas, he had a brother of his Umair. And Sa'ad said, come with me. But Umair was younger. And when they got there, the Prophet was addressing the companions. And Umair was hiding from the Prophet because he wanted to participate in the battle, but he was young. He was one year younger than the age of permissibility. His brother Sa'ad was hiding him. He wanted to keep him away from being caught or seen. Ala Kulli, the Prophet saw him and he said, listen, go. how old are you? Go back. You're not going to participate. He cried. Heavily, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to go. He cried, he cried, Sa'ad intervened. I said, Ya Rasulullah, please, he's, don't, don't let that one year age stop him. He's got the mind, the physical ability, he's ready, he's prepared. He's not normal. He's, this man is well, he's, he hasn't lived on Burger King and McDonald's and Subway and chicken and chips. So, mentally, physically ready. Then the Prophet said, okay, let him in. Sa'ad became very happy. He said, look, you're allowed now. Come with us. And he participated in that battle and Sa'ad's brother passed away in that battle. He died. Uh, and Sa'ad Abu Waqas did not die that battle. The same thing, the battle of Uhud came. Sa'ad Abu Waqas participated in the battle of Uhud. And as you know, the battle of Uhud, there was a bit of disarray. There was a bit of confusion in the battle. Some of the Sahabas, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they ran away because they thought that the Prophet passed away. They what? They thought that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed away from the people who did not run, held their ground, and protected the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was who? Sa'ad Abu Waqas. Sa'ad didn't run. He was the 10 who didn't run. He stood there and he was very sharp in his arrow. He knew how to shoot the arrow very well. So he took his arrow and he would shoot and he would shoot. There was not an... Because the enemies were trying to get to the prophets. Every time he saw one, he would shoot. He would go down. Another one would come towards the prophet. He would shoot. And he would hit every single one accurately. And the prophet said to him a statement that he had said no. He has never said it to any other companion. And Sa'ad always used to mention this. The Prophet said to him, Irmi ya Sa'ad, Irmi ya Sa'ad, Sa'ad, throw your arrow. The Prophet said, Fida ka abi wa ummi, I free my mother and father for you. The Sahabas used to say that to the Prophet. Fida ka abi wa ummi means if there was a situation where I have to choose between my mother and father and the Prophet, I would choose my, the Prophet over you. 
I'd lose my parents for you, O Messenger of Allah. That means you're the highest for me. But the Prophet said that to who? Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. And Sa'ad, whenever he would speak to the companions, he would say, the Prophet said to me, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi. So this is a, another manqaba for Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. Another station for him. And all through his life, look what Ibn Hajar said, فَضَلَّ سَعَدٌ يَفْتَخِرُ بِهَا طَوَالَ حَيَاتِهِ All of his life he used to mention that. He used to say, مَا جَمَعَ الرَّسُولُ لِأَحَدٍ أَبَوَيْهِ إِلَّا لِي The Prophet never combined his two parents and mentioned it like that except for me. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas رضي الله تعالى عنه The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sa'ad reached a higher level. Battle of Uhud finished. The Battle of Badr, it finished. He proved his position. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he mentions, he says, وَلَكِنْ سَعَدًا بَلَغَ ذُرْوَةُ مَجْدِهِ حِينَ عَزَمَ الْفَارُوقُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخُوضَ مَعَ الْفُرْسِ حَرْبًا Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه made a decision that he's going to wage war on Al-Furs. The Furs was what? There was Zoroastrians, fire worshippers. Okay? Umar made a decision that he's going to wage war on them. The Romans, like on the other hand, they were what? They were Nasara, Christians. When he made that decision that he's going to wage war on them, Umar radiallahu anhu istanfara al muslimun He said, all the Muslims need to come together now. I need to prepare my army. So he asked for every single person to come. Every single person came from every corner of the city of Medina. Everybody was ready to come towards the battle. Then the, Umar radiallahu anhu said, who should I give the, uh, the raya to, the, the banner? Who is the, the one that's going to represent? Who's going to be the general of this battle? All of them. One voice. No disagreement. They all said Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. And then he gave him the commands and the instruction of the battle. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar sta- stood next to Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas and he said to him, Ya Sa'ad, la yagurrannaka min Allahi. He said, do not let it deceive you the following things. Do not let it deceive you that you are khalu Rasulillah, the Prophet's maternal uncle. Wa sahibu Rasulillah and the Prophet's companion. Do not let it deceive you. فَإِنَّ Allah Azza wa Jalla يَمْحُ السَّيِّئَةَ بِالسَّيِّئَةَ Allah, He eradicates a mistake with another mistake. وَلَكِنَّهُ إِنَّ فَإِنَّ Allah Azza wa Jalla لَا يَمْحُ Sorry, Allah does not rub out an evil with another evil. وَلَكِنَّهُ يَمْحُ السَّيِّئَةَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ But he will get rid of your good with a sin that you have committed. Ya Sa'ad, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَحَدِ نَسَبْ There is no lineage between anyone, him and Allah. No one is related to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only relationship that you have with Allah, he said, is a ta'ah, obedience. فَالنَّاسُ شَرِيفُهُمْ وَوَضِيعُهُمْ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ سَوَىٰ The highest person and the lowest person in the eyes of Allah are equal. يعني the person who's of high progeny and high lineage and the one who's from a small community in the eyes of Allah تبارك وتعالى are equal. إِلَّا بِالتَّقْوَىٰ Except the one who has piety. He mentioned all of these to him. And he said, remember the responsibility on your shoulders for these Muslims. He took the battle forward, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, and in that battle was what? Tis'atun wa tis'una badriya. Ninety-nine people participated in the battle of Badr were there. And there were other fighters. And that battle was the battle known as al-what? Al-Qadisiyya, right? And that was the battle that Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he passed away. رضي الله تعالى عنها عنه وأرضاه and he brought big, big victory to the Muslims anyone who reads, wants to read his life can go to the kitab al-isti'ab 
and also by Ibn Abdul Bar, Al Isaba fi Tamizi Sahaba, by Ibn Hajar, Usudul Ghaba, by Ibn Athir, and many other books that mention the story and the life of this noble companion, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. So Sa'ad was from the early people who um, embraced Islam. My brothers and sisters, Nabiullah Nuh alayhi salam, this is a connection to this point. Nabiullah Nuh, as you all know, the boat that he was on, those were the only people that survived. Everybody else, they drowned, the whole entire world. The only people who survived and lived were who? The people that were on the ark. The animals that he, they were the ones that were on the ark. That's our aqeed, that's what we believe, sir. But from the people that were the, on that ark, none of them, their children and their progeny carried on. Except the children of Nabiullah Nuh. He had four sons. Kanaan had passed away because he drowned in the water. Remember, he refused to come with his father. So Kanaan was gone. The only th two, three kids remained. Sam, Ham, and Yafith. Those are the three that remained. The world's population today, they all go back to one of those three. So, and the people who are around the globe today are either Sam, Ham, and Yafith. The Europeans, they say, like in Ahlul Ansab, like Ibn Kathir and Ibn Hajar and Jarir and others, they mention the Europeans and Yajuj and Majuj and all of them are from what? Yafith. The Arabs, the Persians, they're all from what? Sam. And the Indians, where are they from? Yeah? Ham, they say. The Al Hind and the Sind and all of that, they come from that. Are we all together, brothers? There's differences, some mention this and that. The point, my brothers, I'm trying to mention here is Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu fought against the Persian people to spread Islam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told him not to fight two people. Sorry, Umar radiallahu anhu went to the Persians and he fought them. He never fought the Turks and he never ever fought the Ahabash. The Ahabash, the Abyssinians. The reason is because those two groups of people, offensive jihad is never done to them. The Prophet said, Utruku ahl al turki ma tarakukum, wa turku ahl al ahabashi ma tarakukum. Leave them alone as long as they leave you alone. The, the dealing of those people is offensive, uh, defensive. Offensive is anyone else. And Umar anhu is spread Islam from that direction onwards, made it go far. And he brought it, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, down to what? Egypt. Islam. Until the keys of Baytul Baqdis was given to Umar. By the way, Umar wasn't even there when the, when the Sahabas took over. And the armies, they took over Baytul Maqdis. But the, the, uh, the Christians that, were, that had the keys to the city... They said, we're not going to give it to anybody else except Umar. He has to come here, to, he, he has to come to us. Then we're going to give it to him. And he came. And they gave it to him. And subhanAllah, one of the things that the scholars mention is that they said, when he came and they saw him, and his appearance, they said, you are the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to give the keys to. You are the person who we give the keys to. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayki.